The Democrats have begun formal impeachment proceedings against Donald Trump. And the Washington Post reports this may have actually started in July with some court filings where the Democrats were seeking information about Trump. And we'll get into all of that. But let me just say, as I've been tracking the data and looking at other stories, I feel like this is a huge mistake for the Democrats. Just my opinion. And this is based off of Trump's job approval, his favorability, as well as the fact in polls, most people do not want impeachment. And not only that, most people don't care. I don't quite understand why this is the attack factor Democrats are using to try and win 2020 when it doesn't show them to be, it doesn't show any substance from the Democrats. They're not doing anything for the American people. Just, I guess they're uh, satisfying the emotions of those who really don't like the president. But in the end, they're not promising the American people any hope or change or progress. They're simply saying orange man is bad. And they don't even have every House Democrat on board. They have the majority now, but they don't even have every Democrat agreeing this is the right course of action. So why do it? I don't know. Today, let's take a look at this, as well as other stories in how action from Democrats is actually benefiting Trump. And look, it's been said time and time again, Trump is on track for a 2020 victory by many economic forecast models, the incumbent advantage, the economy is strong. It doesn't mean he's guaranteed, but I'll say this. If this is what the Democrats are presenting in terms of opposition, I do not see them winning 2020. But maybe, maybe orange man bad will be enough. I can't say for sure. I'm not psychic. So let's read this story and then go through some of the data. Before we get started, head over to timcast.com slash donate if you'd like to support my work as a PayPal option, a crypto option, a physical address. But of course, the best thing you can do, just share this video. YouTube has deranked independent political commentary, as I'm sure you've heard me say over and over again, which means... I'm competing now with YouTube giving the advantage to CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, etc. If you think I do a good job, just share the video because that kind of counteracts the deranking I experienced. But let's read. The Washington Post reports House Democrats have begun impeachment proceedings against President Trump, a key Democrat admitted as much Thursday. Quote, this is a for this is formal impeachment proceedings. The chairman of the House Judiciary Committee, Jared uh, Nadler, told Gerald Nadler told CNN on Thursday after weeks of dancing around whether his committee would formally consider impeaching Trump. Quote, we are investigating all the evidence, gathering the evidence, Nadler added, and we will, at the conclusion of this, hopefully by the end of the year, vote to vote articles of impeachment to the House floor, or we won't. That's a decision that we'll have to make, but that's exactly the process we're in right now. His statement makes clear what a lawsuit filed Wednesday by his committee states that, quote, the Judiciary Committee is now determining whether to recommend articles of impeachment against the president on the obstructive conduct described by the special counsel. In fact, Washington Post says, Democrats may have already begun an impeachment inquiry without most people noticing and without the fanfare and potential political backlash of a big announcement that it's happening. In a court filing in late July to get the full unredacted Mueller report, The Judiciary Committee argued that it needed the information because it is conducting an investigation to determine whether to recommend articles of impeachment. Since then, Democrats' language has only become stronger in court filings, culminating with Nadler's statement that impeachment proceedings have begun. But you know what? Let me just say, it doesn't mean a whole lot right now. When they get to the point where they want to vote on articles of impeachment, I'll be listening. But admittedly, this is, you know, it's it's not going to be like one day you wake up and it's happening. This is kind of that. But the Democrats have been moving towards impeachment for a while now. The rhetoric has been escalating. News reports a week or so ago about how the Democratic House now has a majority that want to seek impeachment, though not every Democrat is on board. So yes, this is entirely predictable. And in my opinion, it's a really, really bad idea. Let's read a little bit more, but then we'll move on. They say, What that means, Democrats are taking the first step in the process. They have launched an impeachment inquiry to investigate what, if any, quote, high crimes and misdemeanors Trump may have committed. If the investigation concludes he has, the committee will draw up articles of impeachment and the Judiciary Committee and then the House will vote on it. If they get to the step of voting on articles of impeachment, we don't know how that would fare. There are 30 Democrats who represent districts Trump won in 2016. Only one of those backs an impeachment inquiry. More than 100 Democrats don't even publicly support an impeachment inquiry. Many of them represent swing or Republican-leaning districts. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi has resisted informal impeachment proceedings because she fears it could cost Democrats the House next year, and she's right. I don't, look, 
You know, I, def- I, I look back at the statement Bill Maher made recently where he said, uh, do I want Biden to be president? Not really, but he's the only one who beats Trump in Ohio. And that kind of resonated with me. I don't like Nancy Pelosi, uber millionaire, corporate Democrat type personality, but she's right. It's bad for the Democrats. It's bad for those who want to see principled opposition to Trump to come out and just wiggle your arms near screeching impeachment. You're not doing anything. But I have data to back this up. We'll read a little bit more, though. They say still getting to this early stage in the process is the last thing Trump wanted. I don't necessarily agree. They say, not that he is in any real risk of actually getting kicked out of office. That I agree with. For that to happen, the Senate would have to hold a trial and two thirds of the 100 members would have to vote to convict him. The Senate is controlled by Republicans largely loyal to Trump. But when Democrats took back the House of Representatives in the 2018 midterm elections, his team feared getting tied up in time consuming investigations launched by House Democrats. Investigations that have the potential to air some of Trump's dirty laundry. They say impeachment proceedings are the most intense and dramatic kind of congressional investigation and a waste of time. We've been through Russiagate. I'm so over this. Man, I would love nothing more than Democrats to come out and say, here's our three point plan to target big tech or something like that. And I will praise Elizabeth Warren to no end for her calling out big tech. Big tech is a serious problem and we need to get people focused on actual problems. And I will give the respect to those who actually do it. I will give respect to Ocasio-Cortez for also calling out big tech and and the surveillance apparatus. I'm going to criticize them for their insane nonsense, and I'm going to criticize them for this impeachment stuff. Granted, this is Nadler, but still, get back to policies, and and I'm right there with you. But when you do this, it's just... Now, let's, 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 let's talk about why it's a bad idea. Check out this article from the New York Times from two days ago. Nate Kahn, uh, Kahn, Kahn writes... Don't assume Trump's approval rating can't climb higher. It already has. Millions of America who did not like the president in 2016 now say they do. Isn't it really funny? I'm not one of those people, but it's okay. I've never been a crazy person. I've admitted to, and and, and actually I'm proud of the fact that when Trump won, I laughed about it. That's not the end of the world. The, the orange man, it's, we're not in Weimar, Germany. Trump is, my view is like, you look at the media and it's so insane what they're saying about this guy. And I'm like, he's just another president doing the same old president stuff. You, you can criticize him the same as we criticized Bush and Obama. He is not worse than either of them. He's boorish. Sure. You know, call him out for that. But is he as bad on foreign policy as Bush was? No. And, and as, of, as of right now, he's kind of on track to what Obama was doing with immigration and foreign policy, albeit Trump has kind of done a little better in some areas. So look, I don't have to like the guy to recognize He's not that bad. It's so crazy to me. Listen, there are people before the election did not like him and afterwards more did because these are the people who realize orange man, not that bad. It's just that simple. You can go all day and night and say, look, he has less than 50% favorability. I get it. Let's pull up the data. I, I, I get it. Favorability polls show that Trump is not within the majority of the country, but he's still gaining before the election. Less people liked him. Look at this. Like, what is this? In August of 2016, 33.6%. Is that a per- I think it's percentage based. And he's gone up. Afterwards, more people like him today. And that says to me one important thing. Although his approval rating has gone down in the past week or so, it's still higher than it's been for a long time. Which means if Trump was able to win with a lower favorability and a lower approval rating, then what does that mean today with his favorability and approval higher? It means he's likely going to win, okay? Unless you can come out with real strategies and real policies to actually confront and beat him. But here's the thing. I'm a centrist, right? I lean a little to the left. I, the, 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 the far left types, they, 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 they correctly label me a liberal. This is what I love. And I want to give credit to these far left anarcho types and Antifa types that the, the real ones, not the weirdos on Twitter. Like you actually talk to these people, they'll call Tim Pool a centrist liberal because they understand why they don't like me. I'm a reformist. I'm not good enough. I say orange man bad. Let's vote him out of office. And that's it. And, and, and I recognize that the system has pr- produced a Trump. And I say, well, you know, people voted for this. I don't, it doesn't, it doesn't mean I'm in a favor. I like, I like what the government does by no means. But I also think that destroying everything just makes it worse and it makes life worse for everybody. It's not a solution. So I sit back and say, hey, Hillary and Trump play by the same rules. Trump won. 
we got to deal with it. And we've got to be reasonable about coming, coming out with strategies to, to get someone else elected. But in the end, what do we really get? Impeachment proceedings is, come on, man. I've been through two years of Russiagate. It's technically been longer. And it's just, I'm watching them spin their wheels and the data doesn't show this will do anything for them. Check this out. From NBC News, support for impeachment falls as 2020 heats up. Look at this poll. It's from July 7th to 9th. So admittedly, you know, it's, it's, it's a little bit old, about a month old. Attitudes on impeachment. Begin hearings now. 39% of Democrats say do it. You don't even have the majority of Democrats saying to do this. Independents, 21% say go for it. And 3% of the GOP say go for it. 18% of Democrats say don't impeach. I get it. A bigger group of Democrats say go for it, but it's not even the majority. So why waste your time when 51% of independents are saying don't? Only 21%. You're, so you're trying to win those 21% while losing the 51%? I just don't see how this makes sense. You know, I feel like there's somebody behind the scenes telling them to do all these things, and it's just a waste of time. And it's, and it's nonsense rhetoric. 85% of the GOP says don't do it. Well, look, I can understand why the Democrats don't think they're going to win GOP voters. That's fine. But look at the independents. 51% are saying don't do it. And here we are. I'm one of these independents. No, no problem saying that. I have absolutely no problem saying don't, Im don't move for impeachment. It is, it is hollow. It is, it, is, it is a promise of nothing. And it will never succeed. It's like they know it's a futile effort. They know it can't be passed. They know it can't be done. So instead of trying to win back the House with sound policy, this is what they do. And the Washington Post brings up a very important point. 30 of these Democrats are in swing districts that Trump won. These are moderates. You're going to lose the House majority by targeting districts that like the president. Uh, I know I sound frustrated, but, you know, it's just, I, this is what I see every day. So, so let me kind of just like chill for a second. I'm not really that frustrated. I'm, all, I'm kind of jaded. I'm kind of just like, here we go again. You know, this is what they're doing. They tried Russia. Now they're trying obstruction. And it's like, none of that mattered. None of it was true. Why waste our time with this? I want to hear about health care. I, I really, really like the idea of universal health care. I think it's very difficult to get to. And I think if we want to ever propose anything, we need to recognize there are a lot of people who are happy with private insurance. There are half the country are conservative Trump supporters who don't want the idea. So let's have a conversation. Let's figure out a real, a real way to protect those who are, are, are going into debt. I mean, health care is a huge issue for everybody. Can you please talk about health care? Seriously, they don't. Let's move on, though, because I got, I got some other stories. The first I want to highlight this one is from July 28th, so not that long ago. Why aren't 2020 Democrats talking about impeachment? Because voters aren't asking. <laughs> like, how is it so hard? I don't, I, I just don't, I, it can, I don't even know what to say. I feel like the New York Times is telling you, the polls are telling you, and maybe they're all wrong. I get it. Maybe they're all wrong. But to, to hedge your bets again after years on orange man bad, Russia obstruction, it just makes no sense. But I do want to talk about some of the more um, uh, less related but kind of ridiculous things that Democrats have been doing. Check this out. 2020 spokeswoman Joaquin Castro's doxing only emboldened Trump donors. If you're not familiar with what happened, Joaquin Castro, who was the brother of presidential candidate Julian Castro, tweeted out the names and employers of Trump donors. Apparently, some of those people actually donated to Castro. And apparently, one of those people was falsely accused of donating to Trump, and it's caused nothing but problems. So the Trump campaign is saying, you're pouring fuel on the fire and you're inspiring people to come forward. That's absolutely true. I mean, come on, did you know, don't you know what reverse psychology is? There are going to be a bunch of Trump supporters saying, dox me, do it, do it, dox me. And now people are going to go donate. It is the opposite in, of, of what you expect to happen. And it's only hurting innocent people. Why would you do this? Look, I understand. Donor information is publicly, publicly available. You can search my name and see my donations. Yes, everybody can know this. But he took the step of making sure it was, it was easier to access. So I don't think I'm as bullish on like doxing as many people are. I think it was wrong of him to do. I think it does cross into doxing to an extent, but it's mostly about him targeting these specific individuals. One of which, who was wrongly outed as a Trump donor, is forced to go through situal awareness training with his wife because they're actually being put in danger by this. And this is what we're seeing from Democrats in the 2020 race. And I got to tell you, man, look, I talk to people, my friends, 
like the people I, I, I hang out with, they are not conservatives. As much as everybody's going to, you know, you, these far left wackos on, on social, social media claiming that's true, it's not. The real far left people that I know correctly insult me as a liberal and a centrist. Thank you. They understand that I'm a centralist liberal reformist. You're right. I am. Guilty as charged. Um, I, I understand the, 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 the plight and I, and I sympathize with their, their mentality, but authoritarianism and smashy smashy solves nothing. I'm sorry, the ends don't justify the means. Therefore, I'm more about, hey, can we have some civility and win back those we lost? No, the left has moved too far to the left. And now I am, am politically homeless, as are many people. And I think this is partly why you see the, the expansion of the intellectual dark web. When people say things to me like, Man, what, what happened to you, Tim? Like people I've known from Occupy. And I'm like, hold on, l l let me ask you a question. You know, I, I think a really good example of what happened to me is to actually look back at like the Vice years when I worked for Vice. Remember what Vice used to write about? Edgy, dark, and offensive content. And then one day something switched like a, like a, like a light bulb. And all of a sudden Vice is now a woke company. And a lot of the original people have left. So you want to say I changed? Nope. Still a huge fan of George Carlin. Still love offensive comedy, Family Guy, The Orville, still pro-choice, still pro-progressive tax. My politics have moved a little bit more to the center because, you know, on the issue of like universal health care, I used to be very, very for it, like just do it. And then I realized you just, it, it's like you're not going to win. And so I'm, I, I'm still very much for universal health care as an end goal. But I believe the right approach is to start with a public option and sell it. You, you have to convince people why this program can make sense and how we can effectively implement these policies. And in the end, if you can't, well, then you lose. And that's the way it should be. But I, but I would still advocate for this. But for the most part, I haven't. I'm looking at the Democrats doing nonsense insanity, and I can't quite understand it. Check this out. Chrissy Teigen and Jonathan Van Ness have now canceled their Equinox memberships over the owner's Trump fundraiser. Chrissy Teigen said she got an auto reply to a cancellation email saying they were experiencing extremely high volumes of emails. They're canceling. What is Equinox? Equinox is like a, a workout place, right? They say celebrities are now saying they are canceling their Equinox memberships in droves after it was revealed the company's owners is hosting a lavish fundraiser for President Donald Trump's reelection campaign. I just don't care. <laughs> it's so silly. You know what, man? I will eat Chick-fil-A. It's delicious. I, look, it was like a couple people who donated, you know, ten, like, like $25,000. I'm not going to boycott Chick-fil-A. I'm not going to boycott Equinox. I'm not going to boycott Gillette. I'm not going to boycott Nike. You know, for the most part, I just, I just don't care. Okay. I don't actually, I, I, I do, I do take this back. For me, I think it's silly when partisans point the finger at one company and, and abandon ship and ignore the others. My policy in the past has been very much so if a company decides to enter the culture war, I'm out. I, you do not need to get political. I don't want to have anything to do with this. But I guess I should walk that back a little bit. Because as much as it, you know, kind of ultimately doesn't really make sense because there's behind the scenes politicking you can't really get away from. And perhaps in the end, I should care a lot less. And I think that's what I realized with like Gillette and these other companies. Like, dude, I'm not going to buy Gillette in the first place, but I don't care if they make a stupid commercial. You know, it, it's not, you, you, congratulations, you've convinced me to do nothing. When, when I see like, you know, these other companies start putting out woke tweets and woke content, my, my, my response has always been, hey, you know what, do your thing. I'm not going to buy it. And I think that's the appropriate response. And I want to make sure I, I that, that's, that's kind of where I've landed. So Equinox is like, oh, you want to, you know, want to support Trump? I really don't care. It has no bearing on whether or not I can work out wherever, you know. And then there's something really funny, too, because I guess something happened with SoulCycle, where uh, Soul, Cy Soul, Soul, Cy Soul Cycle owner was donated to Trump and then faced public shaming which resulted in this really funny and ridiculous thing from the right. Got, got to point the finger at, at, at the right wingers here on this one for not realizing that Michael Moore was making a joke. Check out this story. Left wing gas bag. Michael Moore claims he canceled Soul Cycle membership, but the exercise company doesn't offer them. He tweeted so that the Daily Beast reported that at Equinox and Soul Cycle to host Trump fundraiser. And he said, that's it. Just canceled my Soul Cycle membership. I think Michael Moore was actually just making a joke that he's a very overweight individual who clearly doesn't exercise. But I guess that, you know, went over the head of a lot of people who thought he was being serious, but uh, I, I think is very obviously not the case. Look, I watched Michael Moore's Fahrenheit 11.9. It was terrible. It was terrible. But let's, let's like, we can chill out a little bit. And you know what? I can't necessarily say I can criticize the left for canceling all this stuff because we've seen Trump supporters burn Nike gear and all that stuff. I just think everybody should chill out. Whatever, whatever side you're on, like, 
it's, it's, it's the virtue signal, I think, that's really absurd. If you quietly decide to, st- to cancel your membership, if you quietly decide to stop buying the products, I mean, you're, you're free to do so. But it's just, to me, it's so silly how everything's gone so insane, right? I think I have one more story. I don't really care if people are boycotting stuff anymore because I've just seen it so much. I'm like, yeah, whatever, man. I do think it's bad. You know, if we get to a point where partisans stop shopping at certain places and we see a rift between the society with fracturing economies and parallel uh, uh, economy type things. I've talked, I've talked about this before. If, you know, Twitter bans too many right-wingers and they go to different platforms, it's just going to bifurcate society even worse. So, you know, I, this is a kind of a derailment, but the reason I wanted to include these boycotting stories is because when I look at the impeachment stuff, it really seems to me like there's a disconnect between what makes sense, what will actually help you, and what you need to do. And I really don't see how the boycotting is going to do anything. When, when, when the Trump people started burning Nike stuff, nobody cared. Nike didn't care. People left. And now when they're boycotting Equinox and SoulCycle, nobody cares. Everybody laughs. And so I guess the, the, what I was seeing here is the impeachment stuff's a bad idea. Trump's got a bigger base today than before he was elected. His approval rating is higher than it was before he was elected. He's on track to win. We've got Steve Bullock, Trump re-election more likely with each passing minute. And this is from two days ago. And I have to agree. And this is a guy running for the Democratic nomination. I have to agree, man. You can look at the data. It's just not there. So, so I'll, I'll say this to everybody. Boycott whatever you want. I think it's kind of a waste of time, but you know, by all means do it. That's just my opinion. But if you really want to defeat president, if, uh, if you really want uh, to beat Trump, if you want to get the nomination, this is not how you do it. This is how you hurt yourself. So anyway, like, I, I don't know. I, I, I felt like including those last stories was kind of makes sense, but I'll leave it there. Impeachment. It has begun. Welcome to Russiagate round two. They're extending the Mueller inquiry to say now that Trump obstructed. And now they can stretch out the entire nonsense where I'm just going to say it. They're sore losers. They lost. They refused to let it go. Please do something else. Stick around. Next segment will be coming up at youtube.com slash timcastnews starting at 6 p.m. And I will see you all there.